Another type of media that you can work with as of the 2018 edition of Photoshop CC is simply an incredible tool for teaching and learning. And that is 360 panorama images. Now, you may have also heard these referred to as 360 VR images or simply 360 images. Now, to capture a 360 image, you'll either need a 360 camera or an app on your mobile phone capable of capturing and saving 360 images in the equi rectangular format. Now, I took this image of my sailboat using my Rika Theta V360 camera, and this is the image as it came out of the camera. It's a JPEG image, and it looks all stretched out down here at the bottom and up here at the top, which makes it really hard to figure out what's really going on in this flat view until we convert it into a spherical panorama or wrap this image around the inside of a virtual sphere. Now, you do that by going up to the 3D menu, go down to Spherical Panorama, and select New Panorama Layer from Selected Layers. Now, Photoshop is going to throw a dialog window up for you and ask you if you'd like to switch to the 3D workspace. Now, I'm going to suggest saying no for right now, just to keep things nice and simple and familiar with how we've been working all along. When the image refreshes, all of a sudden, that warped and twisted image is now nice and sharp, but it's also a much smaller or narrower view. Now, you should automatically have your move tool selected, and if not, just press the V key on your keyboard, and now you can click and drag around the image to look around inside of this 360 panorama. If you look over at your layers panel, there's a new texture adjustment layer, and under that is a spherical map. Now, this is essentially the virtual sphere that your image is being wrapped around, and this spherical map adjustment layer works kind of like the smart objects that we saw in earlier chapters. If you double click on the spherical map, the enclosed equal rectangular JPEG image opens in a new tab just like the smart objects did. However, with 360 images, your changes in the spherical map are taking place on the currently selected layer of this inner file. Now, to see this in action, let's add a new layer here by clicking on the new layer icon and then close our tab just like we did with the smart objects and save the changes. And that'll send us back into our spherical map view. Now, grab your paintbrush and just paint some of those great squiggles all over the place. Then let's switch back to your move tool by pressing the V key on your keyboard and now click and drag around and notice how the squiggles are stuck on the sphere itself, right where you painted them. Now let's double click on that spherical map to go back into our flat view. And you can see those squiggles are all stretched and broken across the two edges of the image. If you toggle layer one's visibility off, the squiggles go away. Let's add another new layer and call this one base and shadow and make sure it's selected, then close and save the tab. Whenever you're inside of your sphere, you're painting on or working with the currently selected layer in your flat view. Now that is such a big concept that it's worth repeating. Anytime you're in your sphere view, you're painting on and working with whatever layer is currently selected in that flat view. Okay, right now we have that base and shadow layers selected in our flat view. Let's pan down to the bottom and get rid of this base and shadow by grabbing our healing brush, then right or control click on your image and make sure the hardness is set up to 100% and let's set the size up to about 100 pixels. That looks about right. Then up in your options bar, make sure that sample all layers is checked. If you have the icon view like I do, the icon looks like this. Now paint out the base and the shadow. You may want to use the left and right square bracket keys to quickly change the size of your brush. You may need to go over some of these areas a few times to make sure that it's all healed away. If you also need to switch over to your move tool, press the V key to readjust the position of your screen and then jump back to your healing brush tool by pressing the J key. Now check that out. You just painted away the base and the shadow. 
Now let's go back to our flat view by double clicking on the spherical map. And that healing was all done non-destructively here on the base and shadow layer. Let's make sure we leave the visibility of this layer turned back on. And now let's export our panorama. Close and save the layer. Then switch back to your move tool and reorient your panorama so that the horizon is generally in the center and it's flat. Now to export, go back up to the 3D menu and down to Spherical Panorama, and this time, select Export Panorama. Let's give your file a name. I'll call mine boat.jpg, and I'll save it to my desktop, and then click the Save button. You can now minimize Photoshop, and your 3D panorama is here on your desktop. You can now upload this JPEG image into Facebook, Google Cardboard enabled apps, or check out my training tips weekly series. Look for the episode called Creating 360 VR Story Spheres to learn how to create a virtual tour for your students. Then let's save our spherical panorama with all of our layers by going back into Photoshop, then go up to the file menu and choose Save As. I'll save that file up to my desktop and click Save. 